Hey guys, and welcome to the Bayern View. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, special show today. We've got a Real Madrid fan in here, uh, or Senaid, obviously. Um, thank you for coming on the show, mate. Absolute pleasure, to be honest. Bayern respect, always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The European Classico, basically. Yeah, basically, 100%. If you haven't already, please go over to Let's Be Real. Um, it's in the title. Go in uh, over there. Hit the subscribe button. Um, real fans over there. I hate the I hate the term real fans, but like in the fact that they're not PR trained. It's real opinion and everything. Hundred um, percent. And um, yeah, make sure to go over there. Um, I've been trying to look for a Real Madrid fan for a while. Mm. Uh, I'm very very happy to have you on the channel. Uh, various things to talk about uh, your your team and how your league's going and so on and so forth. Um, we will we will talk about how my team's doing. Um, <laughs> that, sure that's the that's the hot topic basically in Europe. Yeah, 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 hundred <laughs> uh, percent. And then obviously we talk about our of Davies and so on and so forth. Um, but do you want to do you want to start on your season or you want to start with my season? It's up to you. <laughs> up to you, basically. You're the host. It's your call. Um, uh, we we we'll start with Real Madrid then because you, you're Fair doing on. very very good. But you're doing very very good. Bayern, on the other hand, not so much. Um, so Real Madrid, what that you're first in the league, if I'm right by saying 100% being like eight points clear, yeah. And you're doing, I've got, I've got the um, thingy up here. Girona were doing um, good for a little bit, weren't they? Um, did, did they scare you at all? Girona, to be honest, um, <laughs> at, at different points of the season, like I thought, yeah, they might fall off, they might fall off, but then, yeah, the eventual fall off came. They had a very good purple patch, but you know teams with uh, inexperience like them mm -hmm. and the lack of budget they have, you know, it, it was bound to happen. But they play a good brand of football. You know, obviously they're owned by the City Group. You know that kind of <clears throat> even even Big Steve. You know, last season, like when we did the preview for last year's semi final, he came on and he was basically you know puffing his chest out. You know, claiming that you know Castellanos they they bet us four nil. I, I think um, before the second leg or the first leg of the Champions League semi final last season. Um, so you hate to you hate to kind of admire them. You know, you can't really. You know, get that city equation out of out of Girona, but yet, considering their budget, considering um, how it represents a, a great city, and you know, like uh, it's, it's it's a it's, it's a fantastic story. Like it's it's absolutely one made in the realms of you know Leicester City's Premier League title uh, run in and whatnot. But uh, yeah, but Real Madrid and Barcelona and La Liga, it's not so straightforward, is it? Yeah, no, hundred percent. Uh, to be honest with you, obviously it's a bit mm. different um, because obviously uh, Leverkusen have got history, but like I was waiting for them to to fall off as well, mm. and obviously that just has not happened, um, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but with with the league, um, you've only lost once, um, which obviously um, was that the game you just mentioned that loss. Uh, we lost against Atleti. Basically. Oh, I feel like I'm trying. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we're at the uh, Metropolitano. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you. Which so, was, yeah, Matt. the biggest low point in the season, uh, to put it other lightly. Matt, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you make of um, Ancelotti as the manager? See, Ancelotti, um, he divides opinion. You know, um, he is someone with uh, a lot of experience. You know, obviously, he was uh, an excellent player. Uh, for Roma, for Milan, uh, his his pedigree is is you know second to none. Um, he is someone who is super super uh, well versed in how to kind of manage the intangibles more than intangibles. You know he's the perfect players manager. Um, personally, for me, he gave me my greatest uh, you know Real Madrid moment. Uh, you know uh, La Decima in in twenty fourteen when you know. All hope was lost, and you know we were kind of hunting for a Champions League win for 14 years, and yeah, man came along, uh, you know, like played with his eyebrows, and then yeah, we got the job done. Um, but as of late, you know, stylistically, yes, I knew that uh, you know Italian managers, the, the Calciatore, you know, it's 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 pragmatic. You know, you can't expect expansive football. It's 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 about controlling the game. It's about how much you can 
kind of negate what the opposition is good at. Um, I think he he is excellent at it, but when it doesn't go exactly the way you kind of you know think about it in your in your head, uh, it 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 uh, yeah, it really provides for you know uh, a dull viewing, um, dull to put it lightly. Um, other times, you know, it's 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 gruesome to watch, especially. uh what we saw against city um at the at they had last season um yeah quite nobody saw that coming um did we um fornell uh was was hard to sit through but then again um this season he has kind of completely revamped the way uh he sets up a side you know because uh, bayern of the season like we were kind of in a um in, in in some sort of a limbo as to where this team is going to go because uh a huge section of the fan base expected carlo to go whether it be by mutual agreement or you know the club basically you know sacking him um cuz let's let's get it straight you know i mean the standards are similar uh, at at bayern as well a domestic cup especially um uh, doesn't really you know way much compared to the champions league especially for for us uh, or, or or the la liga so for me last season was a was an absolute failure um in, in terms of uh, you know the, the vibe clump accomplishments you know uh, the general uh, mood uh, you know in the dressing room but jude comes in and this guy basically pulls uh, his most trusted 442 out, out of his hat and you know tweaks it in, into a diamond which has carried us throughout the season um for large parts it has given us a sense of control that we previously lacked he made some ballsy decisions you know drop motrich to the bench um even even drop cruz to the bench but then he noticed that you know without cruz you know his 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 system wasn't as as refined so cruz regain his spot and has been flying ever since but yeah man fair play to carlo he kind of he kind of you know pulled something new out of the hat and you know kind of um, steadied our ship this season but as of late the performances has dwindled a bit um you know um i really need to see a lot more from the side a team that boasts the best midfield in, in europe probably the best midfield package uh, for many years um, in, in the top 5 leagues um yes he's putting that to good use in this formation but um sometimes the way we kind of opt to sit back soak up pressure and then counter it's hard to watch that that's my only guy i love the man yeah 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 i can see why um mm. you know what you've just said yeah 100% i can see why he never really worked for bayern um, mm. when he was over with us and obviously um like you said of playing career managerial career is just just elite realistically mm. um, just fantastic on as we're on real madrid we'll carry on with no wait, wait before 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 like yeah, since yeah. this is a good segue like i i always wanted to ask a bayern fan um how was carlos tenor with you guys because some of the stuff that was coming out in the press where you know senior figures in the dressing room they were kind of unhappy with you know the training re- regimes and where carlo was basically too laid back didn't really you know bother to you know you know dip in uh you know in, into the training routines as, as much as you know other elite managers would would have liked to and what not so like were there some truth to it like i know carlo is kind of quite relaxed his managerial style style is kind of a bit outdated at this point but uh, mm. it was it, it kind of you know shook me a bit because i love carlo yeah no 100% i think the problem like i thought he was going to come in and just just be amazing to be honest with you mm. because obviously he has the history he has everything um but I, i don't know what it is i think you have to to be a Bayern Munich manager and obviously i have no no clue how to be a manager i'm not trying to be like that but um like you have to feed into our higher ups because our higher ups seem to like with Hansi Flick for instance as well mm. like Hansi Flick again won us everything but they seem to not like the high like if you you have to play by their rules does that make any sense from like my 100% we um, we also operate to that yeah that you know criteria mm. uh, and then it just 
yeah, it just didn't work, of course. And then obviously he got he got sacked. But uh, I think I I don't know. I, I'm same with him and Pep Guardiola. I hate that they both didn't actually work um, as as uh, the the Bayern Munich manager. Now, obviously, you know, winning the league is winning the league. We've done it eleven years in a row. Obviously, it's going to be um, broken now because of Thomas Tuchel, which we can talk about later. <laughs> but um, like. We got the league, but like the Champions League, just both from for both perspectives, just was not good enough. Um, in 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 that aspect, one thing I do love Ancelotti for though is that obviously at that time when he did um was our manager, obviously James Rodriguez was your player, mm. uh, and, um, wasn't working for whatever reason over uh, in Spain, uh, and then he brought him over, and I loved James Rodriguez when he came over to um. To buy him, Munich. I thought he was. I thought he was brilliant. Generally. Baller, baller. Yeah, absolute baller. Um, and then obviously there's the link. Obviously, the, when he went to Everton, which again still don't understand why he went there, but he did. Uh, he obviously brought him there as well. So, um, yeah, absolute baller. Um, on that though, while, while, while we are talking about Hamas Rodriguez, why do you think he actually didn't work for you guys? <sighs> it's basically the evolution of the modern game you know the the lack of the lack of um the lack of a role a specific role for a 10 to thrive in 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 our formations you know which used to be um predominant throughout <clears throat> his tenure and you know uh, a few years yeah. on after um even the 433 really doesn't work to Hamas's strengths he okay. can really slot in at 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 the um, you know, uh, you know the right wing spot, but he isn't as effective as he is. You know, playing behind, um, you know, a, like a double striker uh, top. But um, people tried him. You know, even Zidane tried to kind of you know play him as an eight, but mm, he doesn't really have the defensive qualities, does he? Um, he can he can ping the ball with uh, with you know enormous effectiveness. You know, especially with his uh, left foot. Um, Definitely. Can can score the long range bangers and whatnot, but yeah, Hamas as 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 a whole is as a kind of an enigma. Um, we all know what he what he possesses. You know, uh, the talent, his his IQ is is top top notch. Um, but yeah, man, like like most pure number tens. Like if you see, even for Arsenal, Odegaard it was a pure number ten um, coming through the ranks. Um, in Norway, even with us. Um, in the academy, he used to thrive as a ten, but as he kind of stepped into you know deeper waters where he had to really cement his place, he knew he had to kind of play uh, a hybrid eight or a ten. If you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I guess, I guess to be fair with 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 that team at that time, that team was ridiculous. You know, you had Ronaldo at that point. You had Benzema and Bale, so both of those. That was basically Hamas's biggest pretty... threat was Isco. Isco was the yeah. guy, and then you the know. midfield. Yeah, you know, obviously, you 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 could talk about the midfield now in this day and age with some of the players you've got now, but back then as well, you know, you got you had Isco in there. Obviously, Hamas Rodriguez, um, Modric, Cruz, Casemiro. Yeah, royalty. Put it that way, royalty. So yeah, no, hundred percent. I can 100%, 100%. see that. Hundred um, percent. And that, those, love... those clashes, those clashes with you guys in their prime was was I know the sixteen seventeen was kind of you know marred by some some idiotic refereeing decisions in the offsides and whatnot, but that tie in, in general was absolutely box office stuff. Like, can you tell me one tie like that you know in recent years where it has absolutely gone to the wire between two top teams? I know this 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 city tie. City Real Madrid tie is is good, and yeah. the, the the tie a couple of years ago was decent as well. But yeah, I mean, I really liked the way we fight, you know, kind of fought fought it out uh, with Bayern. If you if you remember the four nil uh, at the Allianz, you know, in twenty fourteen, I I didn't give my team any chance. But uh, yeah, yeah, with with Bayern, you know, it's always fun. Yeah, no, no, one hundred percent. I. I... When I think Real Madrid and Bayern, I just think of Ronaldo doing that celebration, which hurts. Oh everything. yeah, 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 <laughs> the, the fifteen, yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. It hurts every time, and yeah, um, it is what it is. That's history now, isn't it? One hundred percent. 
Uh, and you guys are obviously royalty of the Champions League, without a doubt. Uh, what do you make of, um, obviously, the, the Champions League is going to continue. And obviously, it's going to it's going to be different and so on. Um, <coughs> Because yeah. you guys, have, if I'm right by saying, are still in the Europa, is it not Europa, European Super League or whatever it is. With with that, would one like, are you going to get kicked out of the Champions League or like how does that work? Honest to God, I have, I have no clue because all the yeah, superficial yeah. stuff, like I, I try to, you know, kind of look away. Um, yeah. Apparently... They really want to, you know, push this through and create, uh, you know, a Super League that rivals um, the Champions League. But um, initially, you know, the backlash was there and then, you know, they kind of revamped the the idea where there was, you know, uh, relegation, promotion and whatnot. And, you know, yeah. um, even some of the lesser sides would also get to play. But but then again, like I understand, you are, you, UFR really, you know, isn't isn't really, you know, they aren't really saints, are they? Um, no, they no. have a huge record of, uh, you know, basically blatantly, uh, you know, taking money of clubs, taking money of the sponsors. You know, they they really are uh, an institution that really, you know, prides in uh, feeding themselves. Um, you know, yeah. first and foremost. Um, but uh, the the European, I mean, the European Super League, man. Um, if it if it goes on the floors, the amount of uh, hatred like like we really don't have any at the moment you know like it's it's gonna double triple um over the over the course um of its uh you know um existence like people are gonna absolutely you know hate us to uh to the to the to the absolute uh yeah hell man like we we should we should really like i'll be honest um we as fans it's it's hard to kind of you know digest that um some people are pro Perez uh, in the sense that they get the sentiment, you know, like it would really amp up our revenues. You know, we wouldn't have to, you know, be at the mercy of UEFA basically granting us what we deserve and whatnot. But then again, like I feel like um, how transparent uh, are its, uh, you know, uh, eligibility criteria, you know, to, so to speak, you know, going to be. Um, can we see like a Porto 2004 Champions League win in the European Super League? To be honest, at this point, I, I don't, I don't see it. No, no, it'd have to be, it'd have to be built, wouldn't it, over a certain amount of seasons every yeah. single time for them to even get close. Yeah. Yeah, no and, and just, just, just deep it to get to get the credibility that that, uh, that the Champions League already has, despite it being yeah. a corrupt. Uh, organization and whatnot, the credibility matters, right? Like the European Super League, if you put to uh, the TV channels and whatnot, like, yeah, they would they would accept it, but the people wouldn't be too keen to, you know, buy into it. But I guess maybe, I don't know, man, like football, basically, it speaks, right? Like more than, more than, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm with you on that one. Um, when, when obviously it was going on, I was just super happy that Bayern weren't even in it. And obviously we would, we were realistically never going to be in it because we don't really have money in our league, if that makes any sense. Because mm. uh, obviously the 50 plus one rule and everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that I'm, gl I'm glad on, on that aspect. And I get, I, I get where you're coming from hundred percent. And I, I don't even like the new, the new way that we're going to be doing the champions league. The 36 game. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I like what, what it is. Like if, you, if it's not, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like, you know, this whole, this whole like um, two game legs, and then obviously, you know, I like the fact that they got rid of the away goal rule. Uh, mm -hmm. In my personal opinion, because um, I thought that was like massive. And obviously, there's been history uh, of the away goals, and it's obviously meant like with United, for instance, the first one that comes to my head is United PSG, uh, where obviously they scored that last minute penalty, uh, and then obviously the away goals pushed them on. Uh, and then obviously there's various other ones, but um, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of the new thing. But then again, uh, I haven't seen it, so maybe it will be a success over, you know, a certain amount of seasons of seeing it. Um, and maybe maybe we then, you know, or, or maybe I might uh, like it by then. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, obviously speak about is our our uh, both of our games in the Champions League, the first legs that have happened this season. Obviously, the three three. Uh, Man City, Madrid, or should I say Madrid, Man City, and then obviously Arsenal versus Bayern two two. Um, what were you um, expecting in that game for for your 
for Real Madrid, shall I say? <clears throat> I, I, I see some of, uh, you know, our, our people in the chat and they'll know very well what I kind of <clears throat> thought about the entire tie, like when it got announced and, you know, what mm-hmm. I demanded of my team, especially if, if you know, uh, if we if we if we get the you know the hand of death, which was you know the second leg away at the Etihad, um, I basically wanted my team to get a cushion back to Manchester. Uh, that was that was the least that I could ask. Um, I knew, you know, like yeah, the optimists they were very 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 optimistic, claiming that yeah, City we can keep them out at home. You know, three nils, two nils were flying. Um, but for me personally, I wanted a two-goal cushion. I knew that no matter what you do, uh, the city side, with or without Haaland, let, let, let's let's keep it at a buck. With or without Haaland, they they'll score. You know, he's just he's just a placeholder, a decoy. He's just uh, yeah, hundred million luxury uh, Bentley that you park in the garage just to flex um, to your neighbors. You know, that's 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 what Haaland is uh, at, at this moment in time. Um, they're gonna score um, at least one. But then they did score in the first thirty seconds, and like I couldn't, I couldn't believe my eyes. You know how how much of a schoolboy error that was um, at the top top level. You can you can point the blame at the keeper. You can point the blame at the wall. Uh, you know probably they were thinking, oh, it's the first you know um, first set piece of the game. They're not gonna you know basically you know go for it. But then <laughs> you underestimate what's at stake. You you get punished, and even Chua Many. Um, I, I don't know how much you have seen of Chua Many, but uh, he has been playing at centre back. You know, with the injuries to Militao and um, and Alaba. Um, he's he's actually a CDM. He's not as you know defensively uh, adept as someone like Casemiro. He's still learning his trade. He has yeah he has improved leaps and bounds, but then he was on a yellow card accumulation coming into that. That, that fixture and then boom man like 35 seconds into the game man goes two footed into I don't remember who it was um, was it Bernardo was it uh, yeah I, I don't remember but man basically goes two footed into a tackle 20 30 seconds into mm-hmm. into the game and then yeah he's suspended for the for the second leg so from then on in like I lost my head watching the game mm-hmm. um they score the the goal that Bernardo scored, and then we kind of you know wrestle back some some momentum. Um, we 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 get lucky with the Kamavinga goal, um, a huge deflection, and then yeah, Vinicius, you know, who is uh, a bit underrated in terms of his you know passing ability, uh, put through uh, put through Rodrigo, who yeah, like e- even his goal has uh, has an element of luck to it, but uh, I would. You know, give him credit for his persistence to you know see it through. Um, two one, we are sitting pretty. Um, we, are, yeah. we are absolutely sitting pretty. Um, we have uh, we have a uh, we have a lead to protect, and then we begin to capitalize on City's lack of uh, lack of understanding. Uh, you know, as to what happens at the Barnaba when you know the momentum shifts. They were shell shocked, like what happened a couple of years ago. Uh, we we got too many chances, man. Like we got too many chances to not not score. Like um, I was bawling my eyes out, you know, watching how players were missing from ten yards, twenty yards, five yards. It's just yeah, unacceptable at this at this at this level. Um, and I was telling my boys, you know, like if we don't take these chances, it, it'll come back to bite us. And yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, no, one hundred percent, mate. I'm, I'm with you on that one. And I can see, like, what a game. Like, like you said, like, for instance, whatever the mistake was, the goal goes in from Bernardo Silva. Mm. Um, and then you think, what's going to, what, like, what's about to happen in the next minute? You, know, you guys go and score, what, two goals, if I'm right by saying? Um, and then a Phil Foden goal comes out of nowhere. Um, he's turning into. It didn't a great really player. come out of nowhere, to be honest. Because right before he scored, um, there was a similar chance that he had. Okay. I'm I'm basically screaming at the boys in in the, in, in the chat, you know, when when, when that's happening. Because uh, I told them this is a warning sign. And two minutes later, and you can see Falan Mendy like in, in in the in the replay, you can uh, you can see Falan Mendy screaming to uh, a certain you know patch of space 
is pointing to, to to the to the to the pitch and you know shouting who is who is basically covering this this yard of space why is he getting the time to take a touch look up and then and then take a shot basically that's 3 4 seconds and 3 4 seconds is is the margin of error between life and death um you know in the in the champions league quarter final against you know the reigning champions um yeah we let him have that space again and yeah man like if you give a guy of foreign's quality let's let's keep the quality aside he's a quality player isn't he um the season he's having he's on an absolute blinder 30 31 32 goals and assists and um and, and for for the season uh man has been tearing it apart like the way we switch off man like it, it just is uh yeah hard to watch hard to watch and i am someone who puts uh puts my team to such high standards because man like we won the champions league three times on the trot and we actually won it a couple years ago just by being street smart sometimes in this kind of games like i i wonder where that has gone maybe it's a lack of leadership i don't know Yeah no I I I can see your point without a doubt um but the, the, then then obviously um they scored two rockets of them right by saying in that game uh, Gavario scored the third one of them right by saying um what do you what do you make of that goal because he <laughs> he was given way too much space in my opinion that, that's the thing right you underestimate opponents and you get punished right yeah. Guardiola probably wouldn't have scored such a goal even you know when he was playing with his uh with his friends uh, in in his backyard like he wouldn't have scored such a such a ripper but that's that's how football works isn't it like um yeah you just need a moment you just need a bit of pure connection and even even then like some some poorly struck shots it just you know uh sneaks in you know in, in, into one corner and then yeah your 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 entire game plan is ruined but then It's, it's, a, it's again schoolboy schoolboy mistake man like you you just saw forden capitalize on the on the space he's given and then you let guardiola have too much space yeah. this was the same thing um last season at the etihad as well i know that we are we are kind of trying to negate what city can do by by sitting deep and, and kind of you know uh yeah kind of basically negating them to shots from outside the box not allowing you know city to have too many touches in a box i get all that but when you see danger you got to you got to get out you got to get out and put your body on the line but yeah man uh um, hard to watch hard to watch god you all absolutely dunked on us hmm. yeah yeah most definitely um and I, i guess when you give someone too much space that's you know at times you're going to get caught with with the with that shot and then obviously you went on to uh, get the the draw free free uh with a brilliant brilliant um shot from Valverde uh, or finish from Valverde shall I say um obviously from a uh, from a Bayern perspective I feel like he is really really underrated Valverde mm. do you feel the same um as your player he's so multifaceted um uh, that that people really can't hone in phrase on one aspect of his game um yeah. me personally as a fan like i really want him to be a lot more clinical with his overall shot placement um or or, or shot conversion like i don't i don't want his shots to always fly in like um you you can't expect you know guys like frank lampard anymore cuz the game is not about about that <clears throat> people don't take as many risks there isn't as much you know creative freedom to you know really you know let one rip um but fede valverde is someone yeah who is uh, who is a victim of his own success uh, i would say um because people try to kind of weigh in what valverde is about he is one of the best box to box midfielders in the world but this season again he has, he had to take a back seat to let uh, the others shine to let cruz shine to let um, jude bellingham you know do his thing um he is basically the guy he's basically the fall guy for for, for Carvajal who is our uh, biggest outlet down the right he takes a back seat let Carvajal do his thing covers for him when you know Carvajal you know he he's getting old um so he has to you know basically give him some cover um but yeah man see all, all this if you if you put that in a nutshell you would understand why people underrate Fede Valverde he isn't the flashiest he's he's not the most, he's not the most silkiest on the ball either 
but uh, yeah, he he has got an engine that basically makes any top team tick. Yeah, it just keeps ticking. Yeah, no, I'm with, I'm with you on that one as well. Um, just brilliant player. Would love him at Bayern. Really, really would. Um, not that I see that happening, but yeah. <laughs> on on the um Bayern, have you did you watch the um replay of the um the Bayern Munich match? I did. I did. I did. You did. Yeah. So obviously, um, Bakayo Saka does his thing yeah, in in the first first whatever many minutes and um, sensational finish. But I would say it's a, it's a it's a comedy of errors from Bayern's backline. Yes, yes. You just uh, break that upon yourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eric Dyer. Um, Eric sure. Dyer. Talk to me about Eric Dyer, man. Like he's uh, decent. He's decent. He can he can he can play for Hull. He can play for Birmingham. Right. He can play for. Um, extra city right like he can play for <laughs> he can, he can play, play for sheffield Bayern. wednesday but how the fuck is <laughs> yeah. he playing for Bayern munich by munich yeah like i i generally don't know thomas tuchel i think would be mm. the only thing I would that man to that man is as an absolute prick uh, i'll be honest the day i saw links with him and our club i was i was seething um i was just questioning my own sanity reading you know, like he, yeah, he would be a good fit and blah blah blah. And some people actually backing that claim. Um, man is the most notoriously negative guy, you know, negative Nancy you can find, you know, among top managers. Like I would, I would, I would say, even Antonio Conte has much more of an up- uplifting persona about him. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he can be as bitchy, but he has some sort of a, some sort of an aura compared to Thomas. You know, Tuchel, who just appears to be yeah, super frustrated, super agitated all the all the time. Yeah, I I um, I, I generally could not tell you why he has been our manager. <laughs> um, I, I don't get it to be honest with you. Um, I would I wanted him out the day he come in. As soon as he come in, I was like, yeah, Tuchel out because I just know. <laughs> I, I get, you know, and I got a lot of backlash for it because you know a lot of fans would be like, bro, give him a chance, give him a chance. But for me. I just, I just seen what he did at Chelsea and PSG. Obviously, he got PSG to the final. He won the Champions League with Chelsea, but like, he's just not that manager. Like, we we play attacking football. Can um, uh, not considering that's not the word. It would be the same with you guys. Obviously, you guys, you don't just defend. You don't defend for your life and get the win. You guys attack, 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 um, and you know goals galore. Where. You know, Bayern has scored like 70 odd goals, I think, this season. Like, so we're still scoring a ridiculous amount of goals with him. But if you give us like a brilliant attacking manager, we could score even more, you know. So it's my yeah. question is, would you take Klopp? Klopp, for me, no, just because I think his roots are so deeply into Borussia Dortmund. Mm. Um, so that would be why, no, ability wise, yeah, don't you know, he's brilliant. An absolutely brilliant manager. I think realistically he should go for the Germany job. I know Julian mm. Nagelsmann got the Germany job, but yeah. I think he would be brilliant for that Germany job. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Who would you take at yeah. Bayern though? I'm not sure. I'm really, really not sure. Um, Xabi Alonso was obviously the guy that they were looking at, um, and he wants to stay at Bayer Leverkusen. Um, and I actually want to pose that question to you. Mm. With uh, him staying mm. at um, Leverkusen, there is a, I believe, a release clause for 2025. Do you believe or think he will go to Real Madrid? I mean, all um, all the all the signs point to you know that 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 uh, yeah. that narrative because um, Ancelotti is. Go to... Sorry to interrupt you. He could literally go to Bayern and Liverpool right now. Like yeah. that's what's making me think that. Yeah, carry on. Sorry. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Like that, that. That's that's the whole that's the whole point, right? Like because um, Bayern and Liverpool are two top top jobs, and uh, hmm. the reason why he would be sticking around is probably because you know Papa Perez, you know, rang him up um, and and told him, you know, like, you have a, you have a better team to step into. You know, you can you can really. He he would do the PR talk, you know. Um, Perez he would tell him that applying your trade for another season 
testing your waters out with your own um Levick user team let's not get it twisted this is his, his team right like he has completely imprinted his philosophy has placed playing style on this on this Levick user side who has finally not you know gone back to the never queues and days you know they can really do something special in, in Europe as well um so yeah man like i i think i think uh, the bond about job is is kind of prime for him but then again ancelotti in my opinion is going to be perfect i was talking about this uh, the other day um i th- i think it was on the post match of the city leg of city first leg um and i was i was actually kind of you know pondering upon how it would be if you know chabi alonso was the guy who was receiving um mbappe into the, into the first team and how it would pan out um and i wondered you know like yes it it looks a perfect marriage on, on, on equation on paper but then you go back and look at what happened between zidane and gareth bale um it didn't really you know uh work out between them there was there was a huge clash of egos so carlo wouldn't let that happen which lead you know leads me to believe at least for the immediate future which is the next 2 years carlo you know carlo is fine but then after that you never know but how long is chabilon so going to wait that's also yeah. um, you know um, a big question yeah no no i agree uh, i did want to ask you about mbappe but while we're on that topic i'm like with i agree with you i think ancelotti could tame that ego of mbappe a little bit mm. where he could make it work with it's everything. not just as ego made his mom you know his dad yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the, the whole Entourage needs to be tamed. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting how these guys handle it. Cuz I speak to um I speak to Carlos assistant sometimes, you know, like um and um we, we we didn't really get into the Mbappe thing recently, but before in in the summer when, you know, I quizzed him up, he was like, you know, this guy he's going to be you know the biggest asset if we get him. And he put uh you know a wink a smiley because you know during that time i i think uh, you know the chances of him joining in the summer was pretty low then i knew you know these guys are basically all prepped up uh to you know um fit him into the equation from the get go um and when someone like carlos assistant is, is so confident how can i not be right like these guys have been there before done this before yeah yeah no uh I could see where you're coming from most definitely. Uh, so do you do you want Mbappe then? 100%. I mean, who wouldn't take Mbappe then? Like of course. <laughs> the 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 recent trend that Haaland has been on, obviously the the team like even from an opposition perspective like I was thanking God, thanking the heavens watching, you know, the city side basically, you know, you see Haaland in a good position and these guys are like, you know, no, nah, I'm going to just uh, recycle possession, go back. I'm not going to you know put the ball in uh, that that's too straightforward that's not how you know we play you know that kind of that kind of vibe um I, I was I was really happy that wasn't happening but you could just see how frustrated Haaland is but then you you wonder right like you t- you take away lightning quick transitions you know quick balls into the box you take away what Haaland is good at but Mbappe he just can play in any system any position um any kind of uh, any kind of uh, you know uh, alternative role even that 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 you can you know that you ask of him mbappe is supremely talented uh, so much more versatile than haland and yeah i feel like he'll basically come out on top you know in terms of you know the comparison it's it's yeah. a poor comparison let's be honest you know but then i i feel like mbappe has the clear edge do you, do you see obviously you've got vinicius junior on that left hand side Mm. Do you see Mbappe when he comes in if he comes in which is bound to happen basically do you see um him playing as the number 9 Mbappe um has tried experience you know playing down the middle um yes. has his numbers at at CF isn't exactly the the greatest you know obviously he's so much more lethal um on the left but then again against City what we saw was Rodrigo um claiming the left wing spot and you know Jude and Vinny kind of alternating between you know a kind of a cam and and the striker uh rotation so i feel like man um Benzema Cristiano and Bale had great overlapping um 
underlapping runs, you know, like basically complementing where each other was on the pitch. You know, that kind of an equation needs to come back. People needs to put their egos egos aside and you know play for the betterment of the of of the team. And um, Mbappe, whether he's he's put on the right or the left or, or or down the middle, you know, starting positions shouldn't matter in my opinion because we need to take complete advantage of what Rodrigo, Vini, and Mbappe can bring to the side. And uh, and I feel like Carlo has you know all the tools at, at his disposal to unleash them. And if they do click. Yeah, I, I pray for you guys, you know, especially, <laughs> yeah, especially, you definitely know. With, especially with the squad we've got right now. Mm. <laughs> you know, may, maybe the 2013 squad or 2020 squad, maybe we might um, have a little bit. To that was that was an insane, insane assembly of top, top talents. You know, Robin, yeah. I used to have a soft spot for, you know, the, the Holland, Holland team of, of um, the late 2000s and yeah, Arian yeah. Robin, man, different breed. Different, really. different man. I agree. <laughs> He's the guy that got me into the club. So yeah, no, mm. I agree without a doubt. Um, I do want to get your opinions. Obviously, I want to talk about Alfonso Davies. <coughs> um, that's one of the main topics for for me to talk about. But what, what would be your predictions for the Arsenal game? Um, in the second leg, obviously it's two two. Um, Obviously, all of their fans are saying that they got robbed because of that penalty. Mm. Um, I didn't watch that. I didn't watch that. What really happened for the so, for the for the pen incident? For the pen, yeah. Um, yeah. So Neuer has come out. Mm-hmm. Um, he, I think he's 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 dipped his leg a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, and then I think Saka's gone into his leg. Okay. Um, and then obviously fallen down, and they're asking for a penalty in the last because it was literally the last minute of the game. Mm. Uh, and then the referees run off and then blown blown the whistle. They didn't, they, they seem to, like, he put his finger to his ear and everything with the VAR thing, but it doesn't seem like they VAR'd it at all. Um, so what, what did you, me, what did you reckon happened? Um, yeah. Like, was yeah, it, was me, it, I, was it I an obvious? I don't think it was. Mm. I okay. don't think it was. Uh, it is split. Uh, of course, if that happens, if it's vice versa and it's... Have you seen party, decisions like that being given? Is my question. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. In in the um in the Premier yeah. League Arsenal, I've got those before. Mm. Um, and actually, I think I think actually from Bakayo as well. Mm. Um, so I can see why they want the penalty. For me, I don't think it necessarily is a penalty. But the penalty call, we had another penalty call that the referee didn't want to give, uh, where it was the handball Gabriel. So basically, their goalkeeper kicked it to Gabriel, um, which in tend he actually took the goal kick. Mm. And Gabriel's touched the ball with his hand to then go and take it again. And the referee didn't want to give give it because it's a schoolboy error, which I generally don't understand. Like <laughs> as a Champions League final, you have like anything actually, it doesn't even have to be a final. You have to give those um as a penalty. Um but yeah, what would be your opinion on the um the second leg? Uh, for 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 Bayern, right? Yeah, for Bayern, yeah. So I, I, I see. Um, this is going off what I saw in the highlights, right? So, yeah. like, I wouldn't have you know the in-depth uh, knowledge of you know knowledge. Um, watching them week in week out and how you know the intricacies are between the players and you know. Um, apart from Conrad Lima, I think I have a pretty good grasp on the rest of your of your starting eleven against Arsenal at the, at the Emirates. Um, I, I feel like man, uh, Arsenal are some. You know, Arsenal, Arsenal fans are some someone who would get carried away by uh, by the narrative, and I feel like the, it it has a huge influence on the club personally. Because um, because I kind of watch Arsenal whenever I can, you know, not religiously watch them, but I do, you know, tend to catch most of the games. And the feeling that I get is they'll be yeah they'll be led into a trap uh, at the Alliance and. Uh, I was fearing what would Bayern do, right? Like I would like for me, Bayern losing heavily to Arsenal in the first leg was something that you know was uh, was coming. Um, you know, going off what happened against Heidenheim, you know, and the recent Bayern downward spiral. I thought, yeah, Arsenal are going to put them away easy. But then again, um, what I saw uh, from from the highlights I watched, uh, you know, the the, uh, the the occasion was getting to Arsenal. Uh, and their players, it, it clearly was messing up their their entire 
um, entire head. Um, we all know they haven't been really in this kind of a kind of an environment for for a for a good decade. Um, they are still kind of you know getting used to you know the 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 Champions League anthem. Um, so Bayern will have the edge at home. Um, I know you had some some horrendous results at home. You know in the Bundesliga, it was it was hard to it was hard to wonder. You know uh, how you you guys you know could uh, yeah fall to some some sides, but with Tuchel at the helm, like I, I didn't see you know no surprises there. But um, yeah. I feel like you guys have the edge, man, clear edge. Because uh, if you don't do the job, come on, you got you guys got to sack him the next morning. Or on, or even on the on the on the team bus, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree with you. I would would have loved for him to go the same time he come in the door. But yeah. would you? This is my question. Yeah, would you? Would you rather see him walk? Oh, he's he's walking anyway at the end of the season, right? Uh, no, I think it's the mutual consent. Mutual consent. Okay, that's uh, that's how uh, that's how all the. The, the celebrity couples break up, right? It, it's mutual consent. Yeah. It's, it's similar. It's similar. But I, I do think that uh, there's a huge communication gap, right, between Tuchel and, and the yeah. board. Mm. Yeah, no. It's just it's just stupid, to be honest with you. Like, he, he's just not good enough. To be fair, he got a good result, and it's going to be interesting to see what he does. But, like, how can you go off? How can you, like, support this man? When he keeps playing Eric Dyer, <laughs> like it's so stupid. Upper like, Meccano as well, bro. Like yeah. I saw, I saw what he did uh, against Heidenheim. Man lost his footing. Like I've seen him, you know, lose his footing in the World Cup, in the Euros. This man is not good enough. Like I used to rate Upper Meccano so highly. What happened to him, really? Yeah, I, I generally could not tell you. Um, I, I rate him as well. I, I don't understand because when he know. broke through, he was supposed to be the next big guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we obviously um, we got um, Upamecano, and then obviously Liverpool went and got um, Canate, and Canate seems way better. Um, obviously, they're both playing in different different systems, different um, leagues, and everything. But yeah, I agree with you. Like Upamecano just doesn't seem half the player is what he was doing um, at um, at Leipzig. It's it's he just lacks composure. Just like yeah. composure, like when he's supposed to be your senior centre back. I know Eric Dyer is the the old head among, among yeah, those yeah, two, yeah. but he's supposed to be the guy who should be leading your your back line. Yeah, no, mm. I, I I don't get it either. To be honest with you, I don't I don't understand. Um, but yeah, I agree. I do agree with you where you say uh, that we we should we should get the win. We we realistically should. You know, we. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. Like my other yeah. question is: is is newer the same? After he came back, yeah, for for me, um, for me, he's still he's still making ridiculously save uh, saves, and um, a lot of obviously we've been very very poor this season, um, mm-hmm. but he still is doing what he has done in the past. I think that that injury hurt us a lot because obviously then we had to go yeah, get Jan Summer and so on. But yeah, from when he coming back, from when he come back, shall I say, uh, yeah, he has he's been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, um, yeah, he's been he's been absolutely brilliant. And um, obviously, uh, with with the likes of Eric Dyer and and um, of Mancano not playing too good, and then obviously with you know uh, Delit Delit gets injured, then we've got um, Kim and Jay going on uh, international, and it's like it's all like a scramble. Obviously, he's not going to have the best performances because he doesn't know who's going to be in front of him. Like obviously, uh, of old days where we had. Boateng and Dante and so on. You knew who was going to be in front of them. And now we, we don't know. Um, it seems like Thomas Duke was trying to steady the ship in a bit where it's like, okay, Eric Dyer and Dillett are going to be the main two. Still mm-hmm. don't understand why that's a thing, to be perfectly honest, but it is. Um, who who then, are the alternatives? So so Eric Dyer and Dillett are the main two. And then mm-hmm. the other two are Uffman Kano and uh, Kim Min Jae. Um, they seem to be the the other two that he's trying to. What happened uh, to Kim and Jay? Um, he he went on international break mm-hmm. with, uh, with um Korea, and then come back and just was not in the team. So 
I'm yeah, I, I don't really know. So it's, it's a crucial thing again. Oh yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And it's the same thing with our right back Mazzari. Like he just had... would, uh, yeah, he just would have thought he had the wrong, wrong kind of ramen or something, right? Yeah, 100%. yeah. I don't, I don't really. I don't he just, he just him. appears to me as someone super silly. Like I, I don't think there's even a credible reason why he's out of the side. I thought he was kind of in poor form, you know, had a couple of knocks here and there, but uh, yeah. It seems like yeah. uh, another Tommy Tuchel masterclass, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I'm super impressed uh, by the way Nabri has been playing and how kind of mm. Leroy Sané has kind of reignited his career. Looks good, man. Looks good. Yeah, Nabri put in an absolute shift in that Arsenal game and then mm. got himself injured. So he, he could he could have scored another. Yeah, I agree. He got himself injured though, so unfortunately, I don't think he'll be playing. Uh, again, oh, so, did he? Oh, that's that's yeah. that's up. Mm. And I think Leroy Sutton has got some sort of injury as well. I did the press conference reaction earlier, and mm-hmm. um, Tuchel was saying like, um, "We're going to try and get him in for the Arsenal game on Wednesday." Blah blah right. blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what's going to happen in that one. One thing that I did want to ask you, and obviously the main topic um, of this show, uh, and getting in a Real Madrid fan, and it's been a great talking to you, mate. Um, Same here. Yeah. <sighs> Alfonso Davies. Hmm. I don't really want to speak about this guy because he's up here. Uh, he's one of my favourite players, uh, and I, I, he's kind of like a villain now in my head. What 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 do you um make of him and him coming to Real Madrid and so on? <clears throat> Alfonso Davies, you know, ever since he obviously broke through uh, from the MLS, and then you know he was, you know thought to be this 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 superstar from from North America and whatnot. Like I I live in Canada and half the population doesn't know who he is. You know that's that's the reality. Nobody knows who Alfonso Davis is apart from you know the 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 actual super um, well versed football fanatics. You know, um, but that aside, he has really you know gone on to become um, you know uh, like someone who has reinvented himself. He was a winger, right? He was a high flying winger. Then, you know, he yeah. kind of um, slotted into left back and then has been doing his thing ever since uh, the, the, the highs of the Champions League win. Um, but my question to you before I give you what I think of Davis, because I don't have the same um, um, time to watch Bayern, you know, as much as you do, right? Um, so, what I hear the general consensus is that. Davis isn't the same player he was when he won you guys the Champions League. Um, is, is there some truth to it? And can you tell me why it's the case? Yeah. Um, so, obviously, 2020, you know, he was one of the main reasons we won that. Obviously, Lewandowski was banging in the goals left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. But um, he, you know, going up uh, on the wing, cutting the ball in, so on and so forth. And he was absolutely electric. Um the consensus for me is I don't think he ever wanted to come and play as um, a left back. Obviously, what he has done has been nothing short of amazing. But he did go on an interview. I'm not, not too sure when it was now. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking off the top of my head. But he was talking to some, um, I think they might have been his mates on a podcast. He was basically saying that he was brought in to be the Iron Rob End replacement, um, which baffles me because he can't shoot. <laughs> um, so I don't really understand that. but. On him being a left back, yeah, he's he from then he he has d- decreased a little bit uh, in in playing. He's still got the 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 speed. Um, just thinking of him and Vinny down that side actually does scare me. Um, but like for me, he just doesn't seem to be himself. Um, and you know, we always knew that. Like, I'll just use Saka for instance. If Saka beats him in a race. Mm-hmm. Um, He's still gonna be. He's still gonna catch up with him because he's rapid. He's ridiculously fast. Um, same with like Mo Salah in um, preseason. Ridiculously fast. Mo Salah thought he was gonna go through. Alfonso catches him, but he just doesn't seem to be um, that player anymore. And I don't know if it. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know if it is because he wants to move to Real Madrid or he wants to move in general. Uh, he was about to sign a brand new contract. Um, we had Brazo um, or um, uh, Slamahimovic uh, getting that deal done. He was mm. about to sign it, and then we sacked him. 
So then that just like completely went out yeah. the window. Um, and then ever since, it's just been him going to Real Madrid. Like there's, um, he was in a uh, press conference not so long ago for uh, Canada and he didn't want to answer any questions through transfers, which I understand, you know, you're on international break, but, you know, he could literally dead the whole Real Madrid thing just saying, I'm staying with Bayern or, or I'm going uh, and there wouldn't be the speculation. Um so yeah, like their long-winded answer, but he ha- has not been the same player since um, twenty twenty. How old is he? Is he twenty four? He is. He is super young. Yeah, I'm gonna have to search it. Should be twenty three or twenty four. Um, but yeah, man. Um, from what twenty three years old? Yeah, twenty three years old. Right, right. So from from what I kind of you know try to gauge from you know what he just told me. Um, for me personally, like I think that he is a good asset, right? Like let's let's not get it twisted. Like his defensive lapses are um are gonna be a problem, but so was for Marcelo. But then we saw what Marcelo, you know, cooked over 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 the span of a decade. You know how how he kind of overcame that 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 bracket uh, of of you know good but not elite defenders and then he just went up another level towards the last you know five six years of his uh, of his career with us um I, I think davis has great gears to go um you know uh he can really step up his defensive game especially um playing in a side like us because he's gonna be always <laughs> you know uh left to left to fend for himself uh no, not as as much as the centre backs, but then again, Davis will will require a lot more because we just throw everyone forward, right? Like when we when we're in transition, we we just yeah, we just uh, super super, um, uh, you know, front footed in, in the way we attack. But then um, one thing that I don't like about the Davis equation is basically Fall and Mendy going out because uh, I don't know. How much you have seen of Fallen Mendy yourself, mate? But uh, for me, he is an ir- irreplaceable asset. He, you know, to a large extent, he was a big reason why we won uh, the tie against City a couple of years ago uh, in, in the Champions League semi final. And then whenever he starts, there is a certain level of solidity that uh, Mendy provides. With Davis and the equation, I feel like. Probably, you know, with Vini and Mbappe and Davis and, you know, all the all the uh, tremendous attacking potential that that brings with with, with that kind of, a, you know, a left side, you know, uh, equation. I feel like we would lose a bit of defensive edge that we badly need in some games. You know, um, that's my that's my only gripe regarding Davis. But then again, the club, I think, is super confident, you know, that he's going to. It's gonna be fired away from buying fifty million, forty million. I think. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Obviously, we never know what's true coming out of the mm. media. Mm. Um, the media say so much. Obviously, there was a tweet not so long ago, I believe, saying that they only want to spend twenty to thirty million on him, uh, which I can definitely see from your perspective. You know, the player, you know, um, from what we can see, already wants to leave. He's, you know, he's down in tools if you want to use that word mm-hmm. um and um he just wants to go the only thing for me which i do see a little bit is if if he is deemed or his head is already at Real Madrid, he doesn't want to go anywhere else that's going to be a stumbling block because obviously we you know 20 to 30 million for a club of buying or Real Madrid really isn't any sort of money but you still don't want to lose 20 to 30 million you know because if you know, if we say no, Fonzu, you're not going. We want fifty million. They're only offering us thirty million. You know, we, we you know, we, we can't make a deal with them. Um, then he's just going to leave us on a free. You know what I mean? Next, so, next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, literally. So, um, hopefully, we can strike a deal. Obviously, I thought they were going to keep Lewandowski the whole way and let him go on a free. They didn't. They got a good price for him. So, hopefully, we can get a good price. But Bayern just, I never really. On, in recent years, not been very good at selling players. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, I haven't really seen buying profit off people um, very well. Uh, my question is: like, are you are you okay with 
Davis leaving, like, do you think that's going to be a significant loss to your, to your, to your system? When it when it first when it was like the first um, come about, yeah, Davies leaving it it hurt. I won't lie, because um, he is one of my favorite players, and like you said, you know he's he's brilliant. And the fact that he's only twenty three, you know, this guy it seems like he's played at us for a long, long time, but he realistically hasn't. Um, and obviously, we brought him in as a young lad, uh, and um, he's obviously made himself into what he is at Bayern. Um, the only I've come to terms with him leaving, and to be honest, I would just rather he leave now um, because I don't want him to, um, you know, this guy next to me, Jamal Maziala. We need him to sign, and the fact that um, Alfonso Davies is his best mate uh, that that does scares me a little bit. To be like, you know, <laughs> and down tools, and where will he go? Will it be City? Will it be Real Madrid? Will it be whoever? Um, so yeah, I would generally like him to to just go now if he doesn't want to be at us, uh, be at Bayern. Um, but I can see it being a long summer, especially if Real Madrid, you know, and he only wants to go to Madrid, don't want to give it, give us the money that we want because uh, they seem to be demanding forty to fifty million, uh, which I don't think is a bad price. Uh, and Real Madrid obviously have the money, but yeah. It's going to be 40 really 50 million. Is 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 it's, it's going to be interesting because the way Perez kind of handles things, right? Like it, exactly. it really because he would just drag this all summer, right? Down to the last couple of weeks, maybe even to deadline day, who knows, to make just you know, uh, to make buy and basically uh, you know, lose their lose the composure and accept you know, uh, the ransom because, um, at, at this point. It's, it's the, the the ball is in our court, right? Like the player clearly wants to move. Um, Bayern really has to take what they get, um, you know. Unfortunately, because um, yeah. otherwise, next year he's going to walk away on a free. Definitely and Perez right. isn't really afraid to you know let things evolve that way because yeah, he doesn't he doesn't buy into desperation, like. The only, I think, the only transfer that he has done in the last three, four years that me, you know, I, I personally felt that was desperate was Eden Hazard, which I clearly knew, you know, in that very summer and even the previous summer that led up to his eventual move was 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 a, was a, was, a, was a signing that 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 screamed desperation because I could see Hazard was on the decline, and I knew someone of his uh, you know work ethic isn't gonna try with us. That that's what exactly you know uh, turned out, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, this one I think, yeah, we are not going to give an easy man because we have priorities. We have to afford you know Mbappe's and Torres, you know his his own yeah. um, his whole uh, you know uh, circus to, to to put it lightly. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I have a good question here saying how much do you think the salary <clears throat> would. Uh, how much salary would you personally offer Davies per year? Obviously, it's not up to you, but what would you do? We we don't talk much about wages uh, in Madrid, um, <laughs> to be honest, because you know some players they earn peanuts for what they provide. Other guys they just earn they don't exorbitant wages for basically doing nothing. Um, what does he earn at, at, at buying twenty million net? Um, he wants twenty million. Net. He wants not twenty billion. Is on now. Uh, let me look. So, Twenty million net is how many? I mean, is, is how much per week? So is he it seems to be on twelve million gross per year. Your okay. Week. So I think it's around two hundred and sixteen thousand euros per week. I believe he he might he might get three hundred easy with us. Mm-hmm. I feel like because of yeah, his whole. Yeah. Leroy Sane is on mm-hmm. twenty million uh, mm-hmm. a year for us, and that's uh, three hundred eighty mm-hmm. um, thousand per week. So, so he expects somewhere around three fifty, yeah, three fifty. Yeah, but mm-hmm. then again, if you want to go to Real Madrid, you're probably going to take less, aren't you? Because yeah, hundred percent. I, I think the 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 salary part of the negotiation would be pretty straightforward because um, we don't bend wage structures. Unless it's for someone generational, and Davis is a good player, but is he generational? I don't think so, because the no, clubs, no. yeah, the clubs' outlook would be just, just as much, you know. Uh, if you are Mbappe, we will talk, but uh, Davis, I think he'll have to, he'll have to bide his, uh, 
by this time to you know get to that uh, that uh, yeah, pay scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's levels basically. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, what was uh, another question? Do you think Vinny and Rodrigo may be affected with the Mbappe transfer? Was it Zia talks? Yeah, big up, big up Zia every time. Um, yeah, I think Mbappe is gonna is gonna work for just as fine, man. Um, they would have incredible chemistry just from me envisioning how that uh, trio is going to, you know, uh, link up, how they're going to rub off each other, basically. Um, I feel like it, it has everything in its recipe to be a, a resounding success. Um, just because I feel like Rodrigo is versatile, who can play in all those three areas uh, on the pitch, you know, down the middle, left, right. So yeah. does Mbappe. The only guy I think is, is, a, is a bit... We are a bit iffy about as Vinny, who I think should adapt because if he doesn't adapt, you know, he's going to lose out. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not, I, I agree with you on that one. Um, I think that's basically that, man. We, we've done just about over an hour. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. I, I actually mm. actually forgot to ask your name <laughs> because we kind of no, no, you no, know, came on and did this pretty quickly. No, no, that's bless. My name is uh, Liam. Lilium. Liam. I like Liam. It. Liam. Liam. My bad. My bad. Yeah. Oh. I know it's blessed. It's blessed. Liam. Um, Liam. Fair play, man. Yeah. Fair play. Hopefully great, great content can... you're you're cooking over here. Um how long have you been doing this for? Like uh, only about two years. Two years, yeah. So around the same time we kind of, you know, started things off. It's yeah. it's nice to finally come across someone uh who, who supports Bayern because uh I'm, I'm telling you. There's there's too much Arsenal bloat, <laughs> you know, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Arsenal United, holy shit! There's there's way too many people covering, you know, those two clubs. And uh, yeah, I th- I think the Premier League just gets way too much attention, right? It's just yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just uh, the way of the world, I guess. But uh, yeah, man, absolute pleasure. When I heard that it was a Bayern fan, I had to had to dip in. <laughs> yeah, thank you, mate. And um, hopefully, fingers crossed, if we can get past. Um, Arsenal, you guys. Which I think you will, which yeah, I believe you you will, and you Arsenal. should. Yeah, one hundred percent, we should. Uh, then we we'll, we'll obviously link up again and be talking. Well, about do it. you think we would? You know, we would get I, through I, City. I, I I do think so. Yeah, I think you should. Really? Um, okay. Fair, yeah. fair play. Fair play. Especially with the way that your your team your team plays. Um, obviously, it's going to be a hard game. It's not going to be easy. You know what I mean? Like, it should be easy for us, not necessarily for you. Guys. I'll tell you something. City haven't lost a Champions League tie at home for five years. Yeah. That's so that's the most gonna need, daunting task. Gonna need some, um... And we haven't won at the Etihad in, in our history. So, yeah, yeah the odds really... are stacked. But, you know, when the odds are stacked, we wake up. So, exactly. That's fingers the... crossed. Fingers crossed. That's the way I see it. But yeah, thank you for coming on, mate. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Um, big up to absolutely every one of you. I see I see the comments. Um, and um, yeah, we'll get out of here. But yeah, um, thank you so much, guys. And until then, mia samia. Peace out. Guys. A la Madrid. <laughs>